Hi, so in this video I'd like to carry on with what I was discussing yesterday with looking into some Bitcoin internal stuff and around uh, Merkle trees and Merkle roots. What we did last time was we actually generated and proved that the Merkle root was correct in the block by taking all the transactions, creating the Merkle tree and then bubbling all the way up to the top to, to actually form the correct Merkle root and then verifying that. And we did all that in JavaScript and JSBin. Today, I'd like to extend on that and actually make a Merkle proof. So this is used in simplified payment verifications and SP or called SPVs in Bitcoin. And what that essentially does, it allows you to cheaply verify transactions because say like on a mobile device or something you wouldn't want to actually download every transaction in a block just to verify that that actual transaction existed in that block and that that Merkle root is correct but I can't just have give you an API to say oh is this transaction valid you need to prove yourself that it's valid we can't you know just give you a boolean back saying yes or no because that could be tampered with so what actually happens here is well, we need to give you a proof to say you can do this work and you can essentially verify that yes this transaction to say from down here actually produces the correct Merkle root so you only need to download the headers for each of the individual blocks and again I've shamelessly borrowed this from the Master in Bitcoin book uh, this diagram so I highly recommend that book and I put that in the descri description below so what we do here is you've got a list of transactions all the way down here and we've you know bubbling up to the top to get the root now, say if we want to verify this one transaction here, we need to know in that we've got this Merkle root and we've got this transaction. And I'm going to ask the system, hey, can you tell, give me a proof that verifies that this transaction actually exists in this? I know the Merkle root. I know the, the transaction hash. I need to verify that it's in this exact position. Nothing's been tampered with. So what we can do, though, is take advantage of the tree structure and actually just give you back certain hashes which you can then hash together yourself using the hash pair function that we used last time and actually decide yourself that this is valid so say let's take this hk here to give you the proof that you need to actually verify that this is indeed valid we need to just give you hl we then need to give you the hash of i and j and then we subsequently need to give you the hash of m n o p and finally we need to give you the hash of h a a to h so you can see here that we haven't had to give any other hashes and what will actually happen and what we'll show in a JSBin in a minute is that you can actually just generate both this proof very simply and also generate the actual result and prove yourself or the, this was in this block. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to JSBin and actually codify a solution in JavaScript which will highlight this. Okay, now we're in JSBin. What I'm going to do first is just add in a couple of bits of boilerplate that we did last time. So I'm firstly going to add in this SHA-256 library that we included last time. Just save that and then refresh the page so it loads up the library. Then we can get rid of that now. And then I'm just going to copy in some of the uh, some of the code that we used last time to actually generate the Merkle root. So you can see here we've, we've got the same functions as before. The fetch latest block, fetch Merkle root in transactions, the two bytes, two hex, which is used in the hash pairing function. And then finally the two pairs which is actually going to be used again in our new function we're going to make. So now we've got this, what, what my idea is, is that we're going to get the latest block that like we did last time, get the Merkle root and the transactions. We're then going to get a random transaction from that block. And then we're going to actually make the proof for it. Once we've got the proof, we're going to then actually do the opposite. And we're going to then use that proof to actually prove that that transaction exists, then exists in the block based on the fact that it's going to produce the same Merkle root. What we need to do then is actually first create the function that will actually provide us with and return us the proof that this transaction exists in this block. So Merkle proof, I'm going to pass in the transactions. We're then going to say, this is the transaction that I want you to give me the proof for. And then finally, because it's going to be a recursive algorithm, I'm just going to do a base of empty for the proof at first. And then we're going to do our base case which is if there's no transact or if there's, sorry, if there's one transaction left, we're going to assume that we've completed the proof and that we only want to return that. And then we're going to generate a new tree and we're going to go two pairs. So again, this is very similar structure to how we did it last time for actually generating it. But what we're essentially doing is kind of bootstrapping onto it, grabbing all of the proof, like all of the transactions, subsequent transactions that is ne are needed, like we showed in the diagram, to actually give you back the proof that you can then generate yourself. So for each one of these pairs, we're going to generate the hash. So hash the pair. And with that hash, we're then going to say, does this pair include the transaction that we actually care about? 
So if it includes the transaction we care about, we need to then get the, tr the, the hash of the other branch. So say if the left one is actually the hashed, um, the, the hash of the transaction we care about, we need to get the right one because that's the one that's going to allow us to prove that this is indeed the case. And then also, if, you know, further in on from that, if we have the right, we need to get the left. So what this is going to do is say, if we have the transaction in this pair, I'm then going to check to see if if either this is the, the left or the right one. So there's a little bit more data because of it being a tree data structure. I can't just give you back a hash, a list of hashes. I need to tell you this is the hash and you need to left, you know, you need to hash this on the left side or hash this on the right side of the hash that you are computing. So here it's just a very simple way of being able to get back one or zero. And what this is saying is, so if the first one is the transaction, I need the left, the right side. If, that, if, this, if it's not, we know we need the left side. So then what we're going to do is we're going to push into the proof the index and the actual pair so the other the other hash that we need and then we're just going to set the transaction to this hash now so we're going to build it up and we're finally going to push this hash onto the tree because we need to build it up and bubble it up to the top then we're just going to recursively call ourselves with our tree our transaction and then our proof that we're building up. So now we've got the Merkle proof. So now what we want to do is we actually want to do the opposite of this. And so once we've got the proof, we now need to be able to prove that that when I do my computation and hash it all together, actually returns the Merkle root that the block provides. So we can simply do this by doing Merkle proof root. And we're going to give me give me the proof that you have. Give me the transaction that you say is actually in this. And then we can do a simple reduction. We take the root, we take the index, and we take the transaction off each of the proofs. And we say, okay, if the index is equal to one, we now know that we need to hash pair and we want to provide the transaction on the right. Else we know, let me move this a bit over here. Else we know we need to hash pair and do it the opposite way. And then we start off with our base transaction. And so what this will do is hopefully if the proof is correct, we're able to, it will produce the Merkle root that the block has provided. So now we've got the base structure in place. We've got the two, two functions that we need, the ability to build a proof and the ability to validate a proof. So now let's, let's set this up. So fetch latest block, then I'm going to fetch the Merkle root and transactions. I'm then going to pull out the root and the transactions and let's just see that we do indeed get this stuff so console log root and then finally console log transactions here we go you can see now that we've got a list of transactions from that latest block along with the root itself I, I did say that what we're going to do is actually pluck out one of these transactions randomly to actually to actually prove. So what I'm going to do is add in a very simple random array function. And all this does is very simply just plucks out a random element from the array. And then I'm going to say, here's my transaction that I want to do. So out of all these transactions, get me a random transaction to actually prove. I'm then going to ask for the proof for this transaction. So in all these transactions, please can you prove that this one is in it? If we then console log this out, we should hopefully get back a proof for the random transaction. So you can see here that we've got the pointer to where it needs to be hashed and the actual hash itself and how it needs to be bubbling up to the top. So now with this proof, what we can do is we can now check if it's valid. So we call our Merkle proof root, Merkle proof root function. We pass in the proof, we pass in the transaction that we're valid. And if all goes well and it is valid, this proof is valid that this transaction does exist inside of this transaction Merkle tree, we then are able to validate it because we should we should be getting the exact same Merkle tree root. And if this is the case, this should return true. So if we run that again, so you can see that is indeed true. And if we clear this, and if I just add in, just so we can see the different transactions that are actually happening, let's just say if it's valid. And what I'm gonna do is just rerun it. And you can see, so in this case, this transaction has been proved that it is indeed in that block. And again, and another one. 
So I hope that's helped out kind of explain how we actually take advantage of Merkle trees and Merkle proofs. Uh, it's a much better for you know space storage optimization and also for devices that do not want to just actually download the whole blockchain, how they can still prove that they are indeed in the transaction. And you may be wondering, you know, can I create a proof that is, you know, a malicious proof that actually does provide me with the same route? And to do that, you would have to have, find many hash collisions. So it is very infeasible and impractical to actually do. So I hope this has helped out kind of explain more about Merkle proofs and Merkle trees. So until next time, goodbye.